Well, well, well. I wasn't gonna see it, but I ended up seeing it. I'm back with Water for Elephants. Let's go. So I saw this on Wednesday, and I'll be honest, on up front, I was not looking forward to it. I thought this was going to be the next New York in New York, but I was pleasantly surprised. This is a solid 7 out of 10. It's a good show, guys. It's, it is. I mean, here's the thing. There's people that despise this thing and the people that love this thing. And you kind of have those two spectrums. And I was kind of in the middle. I think there is a middle for this, this, this one, but it definitely is definitely not a... A strong musical. It's it's not, you know, anything, you know, amazing. But it is a solid time out at the theater with very good spectacle and visuals and acting and songs. And um, I'll say right now, the biggest positive of this show is Paul Alexander Nolan as the ringmaster. He stole the show every time he was on stage. When he was, whenever he was on, it was ten times more investing, ten times more interesting. He just made this production so much better and elevated the material. His song, um, "The Lion Has Got No Teeth," I thought was one a banger, two very well staged, and three very well sung. He's definitely gonna get it. He's going to definitely get a Tony nom, and I think he might win. You know, because he makes this thing work as like to a much higher level than it should. Um, I also have that uh, Grant Gustin and Isabella. Uh, Macau were pretty good as the leads, you know, they were not, it was very the complete opposite of the notebook, these were interesting, you know, not one-dimensional lead characters that, yes, we've seen before, but they just had a lot of personality to them, and a lot of gusto, and a lot of, you know, um, you know, layers, and, um, you were invested in their love story, and it wasn't just all about the love, it was about, you know, him being a doctor, and her being training the horses and dealing with the abuse of the husband and then them sneaking away and her running away from her parents. There was a lot of meat to dig into. Um, I thought Greg Edelman was fine. You know, I thought he was fine as a narrator. I felt like a few times the narration interrupted the flow of the show, but I thought it was, it was, it was fine. Um, and yeah, so I thought the acting and the casting overall was pretty solid. You know, for people that are criticizing the elephant, I thought the elephant was fine. I thought the puppets, you know, were not... Lion King like, you know, and it's definitely, it's not a show that's huge on spectacle and the circus things aren't something that you, you've never seen before, but they are impressive and they are worth the price of admission and I would say that, you know, these animals that are in the show are abused and not taken care of, so obviously they wouldn't look glamorous and the whole point of the show is it's in the 20s, so, you know, it's supposed to be like, you know, very handmade and not very opulent, you know, but back in the 1920s, it would be considered opulent. And I know a lot of people were disappointed when uh, Rosie the elephant first appears, and I, again, it wasn't an amazing puppet, but it was still solid and it did the job and I thought, <coughs> you know, <coughs> it had very great facial expressions, which made me more sympathetic and invested in the character. Um, so yeah, so I didn't really get that criticism. Um, and again, I thought that the, the, the choreography was amazing. I thought that was the, the second best thing after Paul Alexander Nolan. I, I think if Illinois wasn't coming in this season, this definitely would win and probably, and would get nominated for best choreography because this is some amazing tricks and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and then as for the opening number, um, I thought that the opening kind of went on a little too long, but I thought it was good, especially at the beginning when, you know, um, when Jacob is kind of, um, you know, in midair and going towards the ladder. I was like, okay, okay. And you know what? It's very well directed. I think Jessica Stone's going to get another nomination. Um, you know, and I think if company, company, if Merrily or Illinois weren't in this season, this could win best director because it's very well directed. The, um... Circus tricks, it's all done very fluidly and smoothly, and it's very visually appealing. The Road Don't Make You Young is a, is a bit of a tune. Um, easy, oh my god, guys, this number was heartbreaking. Um, so basically, there's an, uh, an, a horse that's hoof is injured, and um, yeah, so Marlene sings the song to the horse, um, and the horse is represented <coughs> by a human being who, like, goes on, who's attached to, like, this, um like, uh, thing, like, this, um, cloth to the top of the stage, and it kind of, he uses his own leg to kind of be, like, the hoof, and it's, it's brilliant. It's, like, one of those artsy-fartsy moments that I didn't expect in this kind of commercialized musical. It was very, it was a beautiful song, but it was very visually and emotionally hurtful, and it was great. You know, the elephant, the elephant, the horse was fine, um, and then the horse dies later on, and, um, that made me cheer up. I was like, this is insanely 
horrible. Uh, spoiler. Uh, the Lion Has Got No Teeth, I, I love that song. I thought Wild was actually very well done in context, although a lot of these songs, when I listened to them out of context, kind of were like generic sounding, but I feel like in context, they sound much better and they just... I got them more, you know, I vibed with them more. Um, but yeah, is it the most memorable score? No, but it's a score that I was like, I want to listen to this. I will listen to this again and again. It's got some poppy tunes, it's got some nice lyrics, it's got some good orchestrations. And yeah, um, and they have a, a, a screen, which, you know, lots of shows have screens these days. But the, the graphics were quite good on the screen. It was like the sky, and it was very well done. Um... And, um, yeah, this was just a really solid show. You know, I thought if there was any cons, I'd say there was a couple of cringy lines, a couple of cringy lyrics, you know, you know, um, you know, at the end of the first song, Grant Gustin's doing the typical hero, like, I will do my journey now, and just being like, you know, and it's like, ugh, rolling my eyes. But for the most part, they kind of stay away from those things. And you know what? This is marketed as like a kid's show, it's a family show, and there's a lot of kids there. <coughs> but this is a very adult musical. I mean, there's, there's drinking, there's abuse, there's cruelty of animals. I mean, it's a very dark story. And that's why I think that this musical would have done way better, been way more efficient, would have gotten way more acclaim, and could have even maybe won Best Musical if, because it has all the ingredients, if it wasn't the production that it is now. I think a more stripped down, smaller, intimate production would have really made this pop, because honestly, I think that the spectacle part of it and the circus tricks part, um, is it necessary to this piece? So much of the show is not spent on the tricks and on the puppets, on the animals, it's on the human relationships and it's on their development. And it is int intriguing and investing, but it isn't as intriguing and as investing as it should, leading to the show feeling a little bit kind of like, eh, okay, you know, like, I'm invested, but I'm not invested. You know, like, I, like you need to be invested the way you were in like Star Wars A New Hope, basically. And they don't have that strong enough of a book to support that, um, because I think, again, that the core themes of the show are, are, are a lot more relevant and powerful, and I think that this is a much, this, I think this could have been a show for adults more than kids, um, and I think because it is such a polarizing show in quality, and because, you know, when tourists come the summer, they're going to expect spectacle, and they'll pro probably be underwhelmed, underwhelmed, and, um, it's going to be a lot more harder to follow, and, it's a bit of a darker story, and it's a lot of talking. I think the show is going to not do well, and I think it will still fail because of its huge weekly operating costs and budget. I think on a smaller budget, this show could have done better, and I would have believed in it uh, a lot more, and I think it would have been more powerful, more impactful, and more people would have been on board with it. But again, I think the current production as it stands is doing more disservice to the story than anything else. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend going to see this, you know, I mean, you don't have to rush out and you have to go and see this show, it's not like it's gonna win any of the major Tonys, um, but it's gonna get nominated for a lot of the major Tonys, and I think it will probably win maybe one for Paul Alexander Nolan. Um, so yeah, that's my review of Water for Elephants, a great, solid 7 out of 10. You know, obviously it is, it was kind of what I was expecting, but it was deeper and more complex and, and dealt with a little bit more... And it did more weirder things. Oh, like the dream sequence, which I thought wasn't necessary, tr truly, but it was fine. Oh, and one last thing. I didn't like how this ended, you know, um, because it's implied that Jacob allowed the elephant to kill the ringmaster, but then everyone's like, it's okay, but then I'm like, well, he still murdered somebody, so I feel like that was underexplored, and I feel like the dance sequence happening after that might have been better. Um, but they did a lot of weird things with this show, um, and it is a weird little show. It definitely is not adult and kid. It's like in the middle. So it's kind of this weird um, mishmash of things, which I don't think works on the Broadway scene. But again, I do hope for its success, and it is way better than The Notebook. So that's my video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.